What's going on? This is Kev, you know who it is, and if you don't, you're gonna find out in a second here. I'm not doing a book review, I'm telling you about something kick ass, which is my anniversary today. July 15th, 2015 is nine years ago that I broke my back. In fact, it's about 2 p.m., 2.05 p.m., I'd be loaded up in a stretcher right now, nearly unconscious, heading to the hospital for surgery after I uh, crashed, broke my back, pelvis and ribs in a motorcycle accident, riding freestyle motocross. So today, I'm going to try and uh, give you a little brief. I want to say thank you very much to all my friends and family and fans, especially all the people that are following me literally around the world on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, because it has made this whole ride a hell of a lot more fun having people like you to share it with and encourage me to keep doing what I'm doing. Actually, I want to show you something right now. Given even where I am today, you know, I talk a little bit about writing my book and all the other stuff that I'm doing. I want to give you a little shot of how lucky I am with this kick-ass setup that I got. Living in Toronto now, I got this killer spot balcony. Every day I get to overlook this uh, killer view. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it in. The CN Tower, the Rogers Center steam whistle, the highway to the lake. And I feel like I got a penthouse suite nearly here. I just scored a wicked deal. Really good timing, good luck and all that. And making, uh, carrying on with this story, making things still happen from uh, where I came from. So basically, I just want to uh, let you know about something that's going on. Today's the anniversary, but uh, next Friday, the 24th, throwing a party with my buddy at the uh, Hard Rock Cafe in Toronto here, right by Dundas Square. My buddy Jay is uh, one of the most influential guys in my life since my injury. And I want to just tell you a little bit about him quickly. I'm going to adjust this here a little bit better. There we go. So Jay and I were friends in high school. Uh, not close. Jay was a drug dealer. He was, the, he was a popular dude. He had uh, skateboarding, all the clothes. He worked at West 49 and uh, all the hot chicks and all that stuff. So we part ways. And uh, he ends up calling me when I'm in rehab. I haven't talked to the guy in like, four or five years and he shows up wearing a funny looking hat and a collared shirt and tight pants and I'm like what the heck happened to this dude? Long story short, this guy, since we've been in high school, he ended up getting busted for drug dealing, uh, $20,000 drug dealer go down wrong, the SWAT team comes over, he was at a hockey rink when this deal was going down in the parking lot and uh, just as they'd make the cash swap, SWAT team uh, swarms over the side of the snow banks surrounds a vehicle and he's going to jail. While he's on probation, he, uh, gets, he has his roofing job and he's walking around the house with a ladder to tr climb up and do a roofing estimate. And as he's walking around the house climbing with a ladder, he strikes the hydro line and electrocutes himself. Jay is pronounced without a heartbeat, nearly dead on scene. He has no heartbeat. They get his heartbeat back on site, bring him back, as he's awaiting trial, he, uh, his lawyer ends up getting him off with just house arrest because of psychological matters going to jail after this electrocution thing. During his 18 months on house arrest, he ends up turning his life around. He's the one that got into Tony Robbins and Donald Trump or all these self-help books and stuff and uh, ends up getting into rental properties. And he sees me like five years later, he's like, he's like I'm doing my rental thing. I've got my business and I'm working on my music. And that guy is one of the, the dudes in my life who has inspired me and changed so much in my life, helped me do the crap that I've done since my injury and get through some of the, the worst times ever in my entire life. So Jay is still playing music and he's going to be performing at the Hard Rock here in Toronto and I've got tickets. Indie night, there's going to be a few other bands, I don't know them, it's going to be a rock theme. Uh, the doors open Friday, July 24th, 9pm, Hard Rock Cafe, it's going to be 10 bucks. And uh, I'd love to have you join me if you want. Just gonna be chilling out, having a good time. So that's pretty much, today is gonna be just like chilling out. I had all these plans. I just wanna take it easy now a little bit because uh, writing my book, actually I'm in the heaviest chapters. It's, it's fun to write, not, not an issue, but uh, you know, I've been reflecting on some like the worst times which uh, led to the best times. And uh, so I might just take it easy today. I'm gonna hit the gym, go for a Harley ride, enjoy the sun, and uh, the main thing is just simply this. 
If you can join me, I'd love for you to come out to the Hard Rock. And if you can't, thank you for all the support. It's been kick-ass, been nine years. I can't wait for the 10-year celebration next year. I want to do something big. And if you can make it out and you get the chance to like meet me in person if you haven't met me, or my buddy Jay, I just want to be able to see, show you so you can see what's really possible in life. Because just like he has and just like I have, you can come back from like the worst of times. Jay was $30,000 in debt, no job, waiting trial, house arrest 18 months, turns his life around. I go through my injury, my dad's injury, my dad's suicide, and decide to get, you know, make my life happen too. And it ain't easy, but it is possible. And it's cheesy to say, but if I can do it, you can do it too. So thanks for all your love and support. Hope I can see you at the Hard Rock next week, and have a kick-ass day.